Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to do another example of how to find the moment on a very interesting contraption. We have a post here which is attached to the origin. The post sticks out directly up into the y-axis. It has a second post which is in a horizontal plane, the xz plane, and is directed 30 degrees away from the x-axis. So this line here is parallel to the x-axis. And then there's a force pushing on the very tip of this and the force is directed in the yz plane 20 degrees above the xz plane. It's kind of an interesting contraption, has a very interesting angle in which the force comes in, but once I draw the forces out, you'll be able to see exactly how this works. What we're trying to do here though is find the moment about point A and the moment about point B. So let's start with the easier one, the moment about point A. So the way we're going to find that is as follows. The moment about point A is simply going to be the position vector multiplied times the force vector. So what we need to do here is find the components of the position vector and find the components of the force vector. All right, so let's start with the position vector and let's call this R sub A. So that would be relative to A and let's draw that vector. Uh, let's use green for that. And so the vector is going to be along this beam there's going to be R sub 1 or R sub A and let's write those components down. So we know that the length here is 2 feet so the hypotenuse is 2 feet so we need to find uh, this component and this component so the component in the x direction will be R sub A. Let's write that down. So we have R sub A in the x direction is equal to R sub A times the cosine of 30 degrees and R sub a in the, that would be in the z direction, z direction is equal to r sub a times the sine of 30 degrees, that should be an r, there we go, and so r sub a, the distance would be, uh, that would be 2 meters, 2 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees, which should be, let's see here, we take the cosine of 30, times 2 and we get 1.73 1.73 meters and for the sine of 30 which is 1 half that would be 2 meters times the sine of 30 which is equal to 1 meter so those are the x and y components of the position vector relative to a pointing to where the force is acting oh yes yes thank you all right I just noticed needs to be in feet. All right. Okay, next we need the force vector. Notice that the force vector is acting in the yz plane. So here we have 40 pounds. So that means f in the, let's see here, the yz plane, so that would be f in the y direction and f in the z direction. So f in the y direction and f in the z direction is equal to, is equal to f times, now, Notice that we need a vertical component and we need a horizontal component. Oop, the horizontal component should be more like this. There we go. So the vertical and the horizontal component. Notice that the vertical component is the opposite to the angle of 20 degrees. That would be the y component. So this is equal to f times the sine of 20 degrees. And for the z component, that would be the adjacent side. That would be f times the cosine of 20 degrees, so that's 40 pounds, right, 40 pounds, times the sine of 20, and this is equal to 40 pounds times the cosine, cosine of 20 degrees, so the sine of 20 times 40, that would be 13.68 pounds, 13.68 pounds, and the cosine of 20 times 40, which is 37.59, 37.59 pounds. Okay, so now we have the y and z components of force, we have the x and z components of r, we can now find the moment relative to A, because this is equal to, yeah, oh, another error, this should also be feet, okay, coming back over here, we have I, J and K, we have the components for R, we have an X and a Z component, we have zero for the Y component. So we have 
1.73 for the active component, 0 and 1. And for the forces, components, we have, we don't have an X component, we do have a Y component, 13.68, and we have a Z component, 37.5. Now, let's see about the signs. Notice that it's in the negative Z direction, so that would be negative 1 for that. Positive X direction, so that's correct. For the force, it would be in the negative Y direction, that would be a negative right here, and it would be the positive Z direction, so we have our signs correct as well. All right, now we can go ahead and work this out. So this is equal to, in the I direction, we have 0 minus 13.68, so that would be minus 13.68, and the units would be feet and pounds, that would be foot-pounds, minus J times, that would be 13, the 1.73 times this, minus 0, so 1.73 times 37.5, so that would be 64.9, so it would be 64. Point, well, I'll have 88, 88 foot-pounds, and it would be positive, but this makes it negative again, and that would be plus K times, that would be this minus that, so it would be 1.73, 1.73 times 13.68, that would be 23.67 minus 23.67, and that would be foot-pounds. Okay, kind of running out of room there. So those are the three components of the moment relative to point A. Now we're going to do the same, but now we're going to do it relative to point B. So we're going to find the moment relative to point B, which is the position vector relative from B to where the force is acting, times the force. Notice that this will still be I, J, and K. The force vectors, or the components of the force vector, still 0, minus 13.68, and a positive 37.5. But what about the components for the position vector? So let's go ahead and draw the position vector. Let's use blue for that. So there would be the position vector. Now what has changed? Notice that we still have the x and y component, we still have the uh, X and Z components for before, but now we have an additional Y component. We have the three feet of the Y component that we have to add there. So that means we get a 1.73 feet for the X component. We have, now we have a three feet for the Y component and a minus one foot for the Z component. So that's how things will change where we now find the moment relative to B. We have one more component to the position vector. This would be R sub b. Alright, so let's go ahead and work that out. So this is equal to i times, so you cross out this column, this row, we have this times this minus this times this. Alright, so let's do that. So we have 3 times 37.5 minus 1 times 13.68 and we get 98.8, so that would be 98.8 8 foot-pounds minus J times so we have this number times this number minus this times that that would be 0 so we have 1.73 times 37.5 1.73 times 37.5 and that is 64.9 64.9 foot-pounds notice that this has not changed relative to that now we have plus K times so we have this times this minus this times this, so it would be 1.73 times 13.68, and that's a minus 23.7, minus 23.7 foot-pounds. And notice that by changing the, the relative position for the moment, so from A, so the moment with respect to A to moment respect to B, the only thing that changes, we add this Y component to the position vector, and that only makes a change to the component in the I direction, in the X direction. It does not make any change in the components in the Y and the Z directions. Only in the X direction do we have a change, uh, because <clears throat> the moment arm is now different. 
And that's how we find the moment relative to A and relative to B for this force acting at the very tip of that bar. That's how it's done.